Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are looking at the bridge layer. Um, I do want to put in here and I'm going to have it right away. Um, when I was in the service, I had actually seen the bridge layer. Now the two pictures I have, I believe, are the Marine Corps with their bridge layer. And it was based off the old M60 tank uh, for the chassis or whatever. It was very cool to be able to see that thing in real life. And I never knew it really existed. So it really brought home the thought of me playing G.I. Joe in real life, being in, in the U.S. Infantry, uh, in the Army, and actually seeing something that was very iconic. So um, when we look at this, we have the bridge layer was first released in the United States in 1984 as a Sears exclusive. It included Tollbooth. Uh, the bridge layer was released everywhere in 1985 and was also sold in 1986 and unfortunately was discontinued in 1987. Okay, so we have a nice picture of Tollbooth here. And then we go on to, we have a nice front view of the bridge layer going on to a rear view of it and then a nice side view. Now, <clears throat> I, I'm just going to throw this out here. You know, when you see the actual bridge layer, and I, and I had the pictures up here, the bridge itself was so much bigger than the vehicle. Um, and it was very interesting to see how this thing is actually meant to deploy and all that. So um, to have something like this now, I don't remember seeing any guns on the bridge layer itself. And, of course, being G.I. Joe, uh, we have to have guns on here because it's a combat vehicle. Um, quite often in the military, uh, from my experience, and I'm not saying that this is what's going on today, a lot of our combat vehicles, because we had what was called an ACE, um, for combat em engineers to be able to kind of dig stuff or, or move dirt around or whatever, um, they didn't actually have guns on there, um, because they're, they're more support vehicles. They're not meant for frontline combat, even though it's not that far from the front line. And this being the same way. Um, whether it would or wouldn't have, have guns on there today, I couldn't tell you if, if today's iteration, if they're still using the same one or not. But, uh, of course, you know the G.I. Joe Hasbro team or whatever put guns on everything and multiples of guns but we have a wonderful view of this and it is very iconic and i'm not going to say it isn't um like i said i mean uh, for me to play gi joe in real life and, and be in the u.s army in the infantry um and to see something like this was just so cool all right so here's a picture of some of the gun parts themselves and of course here we have toll booth in the driver's seat and I can't make out exactly who that is on my little computer screen um, and they're going over the bridge itself so um, a, a another wonderfully iconic vehicle and like I said I mean for me to see it when I'm in the army and say that's the bridge layer I, I kind of remember so okay so um, nice sunbow version of the bridge layer here and we have one of the file cards. So let's see what we all have here. This is a 23.4 ton vehicle. Top speed is 44 miles an hour. Has a range of 550 miles. Has an armament of two 152 millimeter anti-tank cannons. Ouch. With six rounds in each and two 2.75 inch anti-tank or anti-personnel rocket launchers with 40 rounds in each. Both pairs of guns share an electro-optical uh, computer-aided firing system. The bridge layer is able to span a river crossing 23 feet. Now, let's just keep this in the G.I. Joe sense because the one that I saw, I think that they could go probably a good 40 feet, maybe 50 feet. Um, I, I'm not even 100% certain because this thing was, was set down just um so the bridge itself was open and the tips were on the ground and we got the walk underneath that that was just so cool so this is almost a gi joe miniature version of that so let's just keep it in that sense um 
And, you know, the armament to me seems a little, little far-fetched because, you know, I'm thinking 152 millimeter, uh, that's, but they're also saying that it's only got six rounds, so it's, it's got a magazine, you know, you're going to be shooting a little on the wild side, but it, it's what it is. Let's see what we have for our upgraded version. Um, so we have a swiveling fold-out bridge mounted on a tank with a 105 millimeter wrap cannons okay so 105 i believe is closer to what we actually have on the m1 or on the abrams and, and that as it is uh lego lego laser target designator so we still have that on there um the hts t2 forced induction one or 1700 horsepower turbine engine which does sound somewhat closer to real life uh for for what little i know i don't know what kind of turbine engines that they use on the tanks i i couldn't tell you in the slightest uh we have titanium alloy nylon micro mesh bonded hull magnesium alloy road plates and hydraulic struts um honestly for what this is saying is they took the rockets off they gave it um Uh, to say it in any other way, um, some belt fed 105 millimeter cannons are self loading or whatever. Now, it doesn't say how many rounds we're supposed to have or anything else. And of course, it's all in our imagination. So, you know, we can run wild on that. Um, and originally, this was $9.59 for, for the kids um, or for the parents to buy for the kids. You know, it is an interesting vehicle, and it is very iconic, and I can't say anything. All right, so now here we are bringing it into our Star Wars universe. So we still have the bridge layer. It, the bridge layer, it is at speeder scale, and I think I'm messing up here because I don't think that this should be speeder scale. Um, well, yeah, no, I, and bear with me on this. If I move it up to walker scale, that does increase it. Um, you know, when when I look back and, and found this to see that, uh, you know, for the one that I watched, they're actually seen in real life, not actually watch it deploy or anything else. That was a bigger, more robust unit than what we have here. Um, and if we're doing this as a rapid, rapid deployment force, having something a little bit lighter weight would work really well. Not that we really worry a lot about the actual functional weight in Star Wars a lot, um, but if we're doing this in a military sense, if that's something you really wanted, yeah, you could. Um, so you could go either way on this one, and I'm just going to leave it at that. Although, when we do look down here, I gave it a body strength of 5D. So I did increase the body strength a little bit more. Let's see what else I had done, because keep in mind, I also did all this a couple years ago, and this has been just sitting here on my computer. Um, it is 30 feet in length, so about 9 meters. We have a crew of one, passengers. Actually, there should be a passenger of one. So we do have a passenger slot, so let's get that kind of corrected here. Cargo capacity is 45 kilograms. We do have full coverage. This is ground level. Uh, I gave it a maneuverability of 3D. I figure with the tank treads and all that, I'd give it a 3D for maneuverability going at a roughly about 44 miles an hour. And I believe there was a file card that I had seen that stated that it went about 44 miles an hour. That's where I got that from. As I said before, we have a body strength of about 5D. So keeping this in more of a energy sense, um, I have two heavy blaster cannons with about 12 rounds in each. Now, whether you want to keep that on there or not, that would be up to you. They are at speeder scale, uh, has a fire control of 2D plus 2 with their computer uh, aiming system, and I gave it a damage of 70. So if you are going up against something that is like a heavier tank at walker scale, it would knock it down to 5D, but it's still pretty respectable as far as damage goes. And then we have a missile launcher, uh, or two missile launchers, so going off of the original file card which I don't know where the missiles are on here, but 
and it has 40 rounds in each. Um, of course, it's forward-facing, fire control going off that same computer system for a 2D plus 2, and it is 7D per missile. So um, just kind of trying to keep it as close to that card as I could and bringing it into the um, Star Wars universe the way we kind of see it here. Um, now, I don't know if you want to kind of list it as, you know, they have missiles stored in here somewhere, and then they have to physically take them out and then go from there. Um, I don't know. That would that would be your call. Or if you just want to hate, it is what it is. Not a problem either. Um, you know, looking at the cannons, because these are almost like dual cannons on the side, so you have a smaller, a smaller barrel and a larger barrel. I think my my original thinking was is there could be like a loader system and the bigger barrel would actually be our missile sitting in there and it launched from there and on the inside is our actual blaster cannon. Um, I can't say for sure because what my mindset is today compared to what it was a couple years ago, it always changes and whatever the ideas I had running through when I'm creating all this, trying to bring it into there, you know, Sometimes they just change, and they, they just are what they are. So, um, But with that being what it is, it is a wonderful vehicle to bring in. Um, and if we're going to do G.I. Joe, we have to have a bridge layer in there at some point, right? So it's wonderful to bring this vehicle into our, our universe and to be able to share it with you today. Hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you in the next video.